Whether you're looking for answers to specific life questions or seeking to become the best version of you possible, welcome to the Mental Breakdown and Psych Reg podcast, where we offer insight, information, and strategies based upon research and years of practice as clinical psychologists. So sit back, have a listen, and get connected with our hosts, Dr. Bernie Wilkinson and Dr. Richard Marshall. Welcome back. Richard, we're going to kind of shift a little bit from talking about Generation I, I-Gene, i gen ah, I'm telling you, man, I'm really having a hard time pronouncing words phonemic today. Phonemic awareness. You'd get like a B in phonemic awareness. That's okay. That's, right. That's, That's okay. still passing. That's right. right. Hey, you know. And it's okay. That's right. But we are going to shift. We're going to shift. We've been spending, we have been spending more than the usual amount of time on... Um, digital media, right. uh, social media, right. internet, and especially teenagers and adults, mm-hmm. okay? And so we're going to shift all the way down to toddlers, to the little ones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we're going to talk a little bit about how to prevent meltdowns, but this is from a from Psychology Today. Right. It, it's a blog post entitled, When You Just Don't Have Time for the Meltdown. And it's such a good title because yeah. there are times when you can handle meltdowns and right. other times... I think two in particular. Uh, one is when you're getting kids ready for school in the morning. Yeah. You know, and you, you, and parents come in and they say, I, "We just don't have time. We have to get yeah. to school. Yeah. We don't have time for a meltdown this morning." Well, yeah. sadly, uh, children are on a different. Your clock. little one may not be on the same schedule. <laughs> they're as not. You. They're not on the same clock. Right. Right. So, so let's. We're going to talk a little bit about this, and in in our preparation for this podcast. Uh, we had an interesting conversation mm-hmm. about about this article, but another one that, that this author wrote as well. The, the author is Dr. Laura Markham. Mm-hmm. Did I get it right? You did. We've talked. We've had other um, yeah posts from her. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, and and that we're not we're not as one hundred percent. That's yeah. What do they they call that? A um, I don't know what they call it in broadcasting. You know disclosure disclaimer yeah our yeah. disclaimer is she writes this article this article is written about if you don't have time for a meltdown right. within this article she references she, she references another article about how to handle a meltdown at a playground right? right and while we agree in principle with most of what she says mm-hmm. there could be a little confusion because there is going to be an obvious inevitable question arise as to how do i know that i'm providing my child with enough support without actually encouraging her to have a meltdown right to continue the meltdown right and that's going to be an inevitable question that arises right so let's start off by talking about what to do when you don't have time for the meltdown and then talk uh, for a couple minutes about what to do when there's a meltdown right with the playground thing Mm -hmm. so the first thing is and and, uh, this is fantastic advice the first thing to do is to start early early. you know if you if you know that if you know that you have to leave for school (laughs) by 7 30 right don't try to start the process of getting ready to leave at 7 15. right no. The, the, you're, 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 now you're rushing. And as soon as you start putting those time demands, as soon right. as you start pressing in that way, mm-hmm. you're going to increase the likelihood of a meltdown anyways. That's right. So you got to start early. If there's a time issue, regardless of what it is, let's say you take a child, in their, in their case, to a playground, mm-hmm. but then you have to pick up another child at school. Now you have a time limit right. on this thing. So if you know you have a time limit... Uh, it increases the chances mm-hmm. of a meltdown occurring. So start or give yourself right. enough time. Better, right. Okay. And, and and that's not always possible, but when it is, right. You know, start early. Right. The second thing is, is to remember to acknowledge things from your child's perspective. And we talk about this <clears throat> often, but you know, if you're a little one, and right. you are playing a game or you're watching mm-hmm. TV, and all of a sudden, mom is hysterical and saying, "We gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go." Right. When you think about it from the kid's perspective, that's going to be overwhelming. That's right. That's going to be difficult to navigate, difficult right. to regulate. And so they're going to, again, you're going to increase the likelihood of a meltdown. That's right. What good, what effective parents do 
is they tend to see things from the child's point of view. And that's for throughout mm -hmm. child rearing, until right. they're out of your, even after they're out of your house. We, we want you to look at things from the child's perspective. Right. She wants to play more. Right. Okay? We understand. We get that. Okay? Right. And so think about the emotional mm -hmm. struggle that she's having right. with having to disengage. Right. right. And, it, and it's not to do that mm -hmm. for the sake of giving the child what the child wants. It's doing that for, the, for your sake so that you understand what the child is going through so that you can respond so appropriately. That's right. So that you do the right thing. Right. Because right. it's, it's far... You're going to get much farther working with your child when you say, I understand that you really want to stay and play, That's... but we have to go right now. When we get home, you can, you can, you right. can play. You can just leave everything right where it is. Right. And when we get home, you can finish playing. Right. That's going to get you a lot farther than being, um, you know, being non-reactive, non, um, non appreciative yeah. of, of that perspective. That's right. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I, I, we have to leave and you just have to do what I want you to do right, right now. Right. And, right. Yeah. Number three is to make, make it, it worth their while. Right. And, and again, got to be a little bit careful here because I don't like the idea of, uh, of paying kids for lack of a better word for doing something that they need to do. Right. And she says, this is not a bribe. Right. Yeah. She comes right out because she yeah. knows it's going to be questioned. Right. It's not a bribe, but it's. What's in it for the kid? Right. You know, why, right. why, sh why should they leave? I right. mean, this is fun. Why do I want to leave? Right. And so just like the example I gave a moment ago, you say, I know that you really want to be playing right now, but we, we, we need to do this. Uh, Mommy or dad, we got to go do these things first. Right. And when we come back, you can finish playing. Right. You know, you can have some extra time to play then. Right. So you're, you're negotiating in a way that's going to be uh, beneficial for both you and the child. Right. And you're acknowledging the child's right. desire to stay. Right. And that, that, that pays huge dividends. Mm -hmm. Instead of ignoring their mm -hmm. desire, to, you're acknowledging it. Right. You still have to leave, but you're acknowledging that you understand what they're going through. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes, uh, especially those of you who have uh, multiple children, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's difficult because you're, you're mm -hmm. trying to corral a number of kids. And so okay. number right. four is to divide and conquer. Right. And sometimes you <laughs> there's... You know, if you have a, a significant other, sometimes you yeah. may want to take care of one or two and mm -hmm. the, your partner take care of the others. Uh, but you need, sometimes you need to divide and conquer to help decrease some of that stress and some of that increased probability of uh, right. meltdown. Especially if you have one child who is a little emotionally fragile, mm -hmm. okay, and you know who that child is. Let the other parent manage that child right. while you take care of the others, right. okay? Rather than right. having everybody, you. Mm -hmm. right? Rather than having everybody get drawn mm -hmm. into the to the turmoil, um, separate them and have one parent deal with that mm -hmm. child. Right. Exactly. And then number five, the the fifth thing that is mentioned here mm -hmm. is to when all else fails, <laughs> pick up your howling child and leave. And and this is where we get on the same page with with right. this one again because yes, there is just going to come a time right. when you're just going to have to say. We have to leave, right. and I'm just going to have to impose yeah. this on you. Yeah, just mm -hmm. get in the car. Right, because there, you have to do other things. Somebody right. else is waiting. You know, your brother's mm -hmm. waiting at school yeah. for us. We can't be late. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you just have to pick the kid up and go. All right. I remember that happened with a not well. It happened with a patient mm -hmm. because she was, I think, in first grade. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Weighed right. about forty or 50, forty pounds, fifty pounds, soaking mm -hmm. wet, and they said we just can't get her out of the car mm -hmm. and it was sort of puzzling because we said just take her, her out of the car put her under your arm and take her in the school building yeah sometimes you it, gently it, gently it, but can't be abusive but but you can and you know what they did that i think they had to do that like two or two right. or three times and then it was done right Right. When the, Once, when, the, when the kid realizes that that's not going to be an effective way to get out I, of it. I just can't hang on to the seatbelt strap. Right. They're, they're going to take me in anyway. Mm -hmm. So she stopped. Yeah. Right. And, and it, which takes us and leads us into the other article mm -hmm. that, that we have a little bit of a, a little bit more of a concern about. It, or it raises that question right. that you were talking about. And I would, add, I would recommend that people go to that other yeah. one. How do you remove the child yeah. from the playground? So go, go to it. But it's going to raise this inevitable question of, am I doing, am I, am I coddling the child too much? Right. Am I, am I giving in too much? Right. Okay. Right. Because in that article, what she talks about is it, it, by ignoring the child's 
distress by ignoring the child's expression of emotion. Right. You're you're inadvertently teaching them to bottle it up and to keep it inside because the, those emotions don't matter. Right. Throughout both articles, she she encourages parents to try to understand mm-hmm. everything from the child's point of view, and not to deny the child mm-hmm. the emotion. Right. Because they said if you if you she argues that if you demand that the child stop having the emotion, then you're asking her to mm-hmm. um, just put it someplace. Right. Just don't do it. Don't right. express the emotion. And you don't want to give your children the message of you're not allowed to express your emotion. Right. However, there is a there is a truth in sometimes it's best just to ignore the behavior, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. not keep giving into it. Right. And I don't know that we have the there's no answer. There's not to a say, specific formula. I can't. Nobody can tell you. This is when you. Right. This is when you're crossing the line. Mm-hmm. Nobody can tell you that. Right. You have to know your child. Mm-hmm. Um, but please remember that sometimes it's best to ignore a tantrum, mm-hmm. especially a temper tantrum, um, than to um, keep coddling and keep talking right. and keep you know encouraging. And I, and I think that what what you do to to prevent what she's talking about as far as the bottling up stuff is during moments of calm, right. you, you talk to the kid about, it. Hey, look, I know that you were really upset that we had to leave the playground. Mm-hmm. I, I, I heard you. I understand, right. but right. we really had to go. And you know, sometimes it, it's okay to be upset. Mm-hmm. It's okay to be frustrated, right. but sometimes we have to go even right. when we're upset and we're frustrated. Right. And yeah. so you're listening to the kid, you're letting the kid know that you, you heard them, right. but you're not going to let that, tantrum or that meltdown govern your time demands. I think that's the important, I think you're absolutely right. It's far better, what she's encouraging and what you just said is it's far better to acknowledge, to tell your child, to convince your child that you understand, that you care, number Mm -hmm. one, that you care about how they feel, and number two, that you understand how they feel, rather than to say to your child, I'm the parent, I will make these decisions. That you don't want to do. Right. Absolutely. So... All right, but it is a good article to read. It's worth reading. Yeah. So mm-hmm. The link to these the, to them are in the is... uh, show notes. Okay. All right. Very good. Anything else? That's no? it. All right. Before we go, again, we're trying to mention each podcast the new uh, artwork and the new music that will be coming soon, mm-hmm. just to kind of revamp, uh, kind of bring us into the. Uh, well, I was going to say the twenty first century. We're in the twenty first century. Yeah. Um, no, we want to make these improvements. We, right. we know that there are some improvements we want to make, right? right? And so the graphics, mm-hmm. the music, the music. Um, there's some neat things that you're doing with embedding mm-hmm. things into the uh, to the videos. Podcast, That's the what videos. we're working on. But, but all of that takes so much time. It takes time. And so for us to be able to do that, we need some support. And so as right. the artwork and everything is, is kind, of, kind of gets finalized, we're going to be launching a, a Patreon page so that if you are willing and able and interested, mm-hmm. you can help sponsor, uh, even if it's a dollar a month right. or, or whatever it is, right. um, to help us be able to get some support, some, not even support, it's just to get Advice us some help um, nice. mm-hmm. so that we can have somebody work on these so that it doesn't take so much out of right. um, out of our day, <laughs> uh, out of our 168 right. hours a week. Right. Um, and so that we can we can keep doing more because the right. you know we have so many more things that we want to do, mm-hmm. but those things have had to be put on hold until because some of these other things that we're actively doing take so much time. Just time, right? It's an, time is the factor. Now. Right. I mean, we right. have great ideas. We know where we want to go. We know what mm-hmm. it, we know. We can make it better for your right. um, viewing and listening, uh, but it takes time. Yep. And Absolutely. So, um, you know. Every time we talk about this at the end of each show, I sit here thinking, you know, Michelangelo had his patron. He did. Well, and that's the spirit behind so, Patreon.com right. is that, you know, you need- the, the, the there were those who helped support that time because it, it does take a lot of time. So. That's why we have the great artwork from the Renaissance because right. they had patrons. So. Right. Okay. So, so, but until that time... Uh, you can help us out just by oh. sharing us, sharing links to our iTunes, to our Google Play Music, to mm-hmm. YouTube, to our website. Share it with, with other people. Tweet it, retweet it, put it out yeah. there. Um, write a review on iTunes. Rate us on mm-hmm. iTunes. Um, like the videos. All those different things that you can do. 
Uh, you yeah, can... we want to be liked. Yes. Right? <laughs> We're not going to, we refuse to buy likes, but <laughs> we want right. you to like us. Right. So, so, so if you do those things, that <clears throat> increases our, our visibility. It lets other people <clears throat> find us. And, and then the more people that are following and liking, the more, uh, right. the, the easier it is for us to be able to do some of these things. So, right. all right. Okay. That's it. Until next time. Stay happy, stay healthy, and forget to be afraid. Thank you.